The next to us is Eurovision Royalty. They won the Eurovision Song Contest back in 1984 in Luxembourg. Today, it's well, this year, it's 30 years ago it was. We have the big pleasure to be next to the Hurrays now. Hello, hi, how, how are you? Hello, wonderful to be here. <laughs> now, who, who is who? Because you all look different. Good like question. <laughs> who, who are we? I don't remember. <laughs> you, you look a little bit different too, I think. Yes, <laughs> I was yes. younger, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. But, yeah. Uh, I'm Richard. Okay. Yeah. The middle brother, I'm the youngest, Louis. And I'm the oldest pair. Fantastic. First of all, how are the memories you are the memories you have from, from Eurovision back in eighty four? Can you tell us a bit about that? In Luxembourg's Grand Theatre? A long time do you have? It's, I mean the memories are, are a lot and they're great and they're wonderful. Uh, we were young and uh, we felt like we had won, you know, the Olympic gold, so it was fantastic for us. You know, ABBA had done it ten years earlier, and then uh, we had the chance to win now, and it was just very, uh, we were, it was a humbling experience, very, very happy moment. Do you still have contact with any of the performers from that year? Mm, no, I'm not sure. No, I, I can't say I have. I, I, there were some very nice performers uh, that year. Linda Martin, for example, a very nice person and a, and a very uh, extremely talented uh, singer, and. Uh, and, uh, but I can't say we have contact with any of them. I've met them uh, a few times uh, during the years, but not. Uh, no, mm -hmm. we don't. Yeah. And for you? No, it's the same. I, I can't say we have. Either. We met Johnny Logan uh, a number of occasions, who wrote uh, Linda Martin's song. Uh, well, the Irish call him the Saint. Yeah, yes. Saint Logan. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's a nice guy. <laughs> but how, how did the idea come up that you actually form as the Horaeus and go to represent Sweden at the Eurovision Song Contest? What made you do that? Well, um, we didn't form the Horace, our parents did, because we are brothers, so, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a family group. We've been singing for many, many years, uh, and uh, of course, uh, joining the Eurovision one day was, of course, one of our dreams to do that. Uh, we had a dream as, as young children to be entertainers, so we trained and worked and danced and sang many years before this, and uh, we received the opportunity uh, once uh, from uh, the record company who wanted us to represent them. And, and, uh, this contest and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we jumped on that train of course, uh, we, we received a very good song to sing, we believed in it and uh, we, we thought we had a good chance. How was Digilu Digile the song created? Uh, I'll send that over yeah. to Pear. <laughs> yes, uh, we were living in the States at that time and uh, we were going to dance schools and uh, we were going I went back to Sweden first, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in the studio with uh, Tori Gnusser at the Bay, who wrote the melody to Digilu Digile. And he had written the verse and the, the, the middle part, which bridge. is the bridge mm -hmm. for the song, and, but he had the bridge as a chorus, and I told him, no, we need, uh, we need a stronger, that's a good bridge, but we need, it's a bridge, not a chorus, so we need another chorus. So he sat down by the piano and he started playing, and all of a sudden, the whole chorus of Digaloo Digaloo just came right there and then. And, and this uh, man, Torgny, he's just this huge with beard. He, he stood up and he said, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so he was so happy. <laughs> so I, th I think we felt at that moment there was something magical happening about th that song. Now, let's see, in, in 30 years ago, you looked different. So in order to get the proof that you really can sing Digaloo Digaloo, can you give us a bit of a rendition of the song? <laughs> the chorus line? Digilu, digile, a la tita pa me, da ya go i mina jyllne sko. Dansa de un kring po gata, o hela vada nendu. And you had the golden shoes on. Uh, yeah. Why the golden shoes? How did this idea come up? Well, the song is about the golden gone, shoes. Gone. It's a dream of, of, of someone in golden shoes, so it was a pretty natural, actually, that we put on. After the uh, victory of, of uh, Sweden at the Eurovision Song Contest in '84, you went to the States, went back to the States. Why was that? Uh, well, actually, we, um, it was only for a short time. We, we lived in the States at that time, but we, we spent a lot of time here in Europe uh, performing and touring, of course. We, we did um, you know, 50 TV shows uh, around Europe at that time also. About 400 concerts yeah. and five <laughs> albums. And so, we, so for three and a half years we were here pretty much and very intense. And after that period when we took a break, then we went back to the States. Sort of, yeah. you, you also were part of the Support Festival. What, what is that exactly? The Support Festival? Yeah. Well, it, well, it's a big festival as it's been in many years in, in, in Poland and Support. But at that time, it was sort of the Eurovision of the, the East, East. Eastern countries or the East Bloc. Okay. Uh, behind the uh, Iron Curtain, and uh, and we went there for and uh, we won that too in '85, and, and uh, which made it possible for us to all of a sudden tour behind uh, 
behind the wall. I mean, we were in Poland. We were in. We were the first Western band to be able to tour and make a big tour in, in the Soviet Union at the time. And and uh, yeah, it was very special that's, time. That, that's amazing. You, yeah. you not only took part, you also won this contest. Yes, right? we did. What was the song? Uh, summer party. And so, stop what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Summer yeah. party. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was actually the audience was crazy. In Eurovision, we, you know, you sing, you sing the song once mm -hmm. when you win it. But in Sopot, I think we had to yeah, three or four times. Three or four times, they were screaming and again, <laughs> again, again. So it was really uh, appreciative. So, but uh, you were you were one of the biggest, biggest selling uh, selling artists of Sweden and of Europe in the 80s. Mm -hmm. What what was your biggest success? Well, it was uh, winning the Eurovision, of course. It was uh, with Digilu Digile, and uh, with such a great song, that was uh, the biggest. Mm. So we started on top, and we tried to, <laughs> to, know, stay, to stay, stay there for a while. But you know, it's I tried to put on the brakes on the way yeah, down. Yeah. Like, no, no, not so fast, down, not so fast. <laughs> no, uh, you know, we, we had been singing uh, together for many years and doing talent shows and etc. But uh, when we uh, when we uh, when we had our breakthrough, it became very very big. Maybe I mean now in retrospect, when you look back. Maybe you know it was too much happening at once, of course, mm. and, um, and everyone wanted a piece of the cake, you know, <laughs> pulling us here and there. And so, but, it, but it was a wonderful time, of course. You did go to Russia. Yes. You sang with Alla Pugacheva, who is also his name in the Eurovision Song Contest. You yes. represented Russia. Right, right. How did that come up? Well, I think there were some uh, common, uh, some people who knew her and that uh, knew us a little bit, and uh, so they. Uh, brought us together and uh, we we went to uh, Moscow for like a promotion thing first and we did uh, some performances there for about a week and then after that it was decided to do like a major tour with Ala Pugacheva. Yeah, we had to do a try for the Politburo first yeah. uh, with the yeah. KGB and everything yeah. to make sure that we were nice and uh, clean yes. and uh, not uh, any rock and roll or anything yeah. uh, weird and so the, and then once we passed that test we got to do the big tour. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, uh, how is she to be working with? Because she, she's known as a big diva. Yes. Well, she, I mean, she is so. I mean, you don't understand it until you go to Russia. She's. I mean, she's a big star. Well, she was but, at that time. I don't yeah, know how it yeah, is now. She, but at the same time, she was very gracious and, and friendly. And I mean, she's a wonderful artist. And mm. the things she does, she does it with whole, her whole heart. And you can tell. And, and she, well, she's yeah. Russian. Yeah, she's she was. Russian. She was Russian. And then when the Russian people are, you know. Or, uh, she, she was a diva uh, in, in a lot of ways, but she was also a very nice person. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had no problems with her whatsoever, and uh, she was very nice to us and, and, and treated us with the, with the utmost respect and kindness. And, and, and we had a we had a good time together. Yeah. Excellent. You did break up as the Horais later on. Uh, why was that? Well, we took a little break. I mean, we we had been uh, performing very intensely during almost four years, and. Um, it wasn't, uh, you know, a final breakup in our mind. We just wanted to take a little break. Uh, I, I did some things for the church, and, and uh, the brothers did other other work and, and, and so on. So, you know, we had other other yeah. things in life that are important also, not just music. So, yes, we had two small children at that time in my family. So mm. it was like it was a natural thing to take a break. So but you are not only musicians; you also have other jobs. Uh, I guess yeah, Richard, what are you doing? I do many things. I'm a man of many traits. Now I, I've been doing a lot of musical theater through the years. Uh, I've been uh, I've been uh, running one of the biggest entertainment restaurants in, in Sweden. Uh, I'm I'm a radio host for Swedish radio. Colleague. Yeah, so the, big, the, big, the biggest radio station in Sweden. Uh, wow. and, um, what station and is that? P4. P4. Okay. P4. Uh, and um, and then I'm also uh, <laughs> a head of marketing for uh, the biggest bike event in the world, uh, amateur bike event in the world with uh, about 40,000 participants that takes part in Sweden every year. Uh, so um, Many Germans come to that. Right? Yeah, many Germans come to that actually. So it's a, it's a, so I, I do a lot of things in my life. Louis? Uh, I'm a teacher and uh, responsible for an educational program in Sweden and I also write chronicles and do photography. I work yeah. as a lawyer for the Musicians Union, so I, I help Artists and musicians uh, mm -hmm. with the contracts and uh, yeah. help them to get paid when they yeah. when they work. It confuses them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to be careful what we say now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. lawyer, yes. Yes. <laughs> you did reform um, later on again as the race. How did what, why? Well, uh, I mean, uh, in, in uh, the past years, the uh, you know the, the, the 
past years uh, that we have now, the last 10 years, we've been doing uh, things like this that we're doing today. Uh, meeting and singing uh, at, at events that we feel are important and that we think will be fun to perform at. But it's only sporadic and it's now and then uh, because we, we don't have time to, to do what we did before. Mm -hmm. well, we do we nostalgia parties or uh, big uh, corporate events or, or things like that. If we can, if we have time. And if we feel, oh yeah, we go, sometimes we do a little TV thing or something, but, but we don't, it's only our, our hobby right now. Eurovision has become much, much bigger than uh, when, it, when you were performing it. Do you think it's right to have so many countries in and uh, is EBU going the right way with this format of semi-finals? Ooh, this is, uh, this a, is a difficult question. question. Yes, it's a very good thing that many countries can participate. Uh, the more the merrier is, is, is the idea and uh, I think that's uh, a good idea. Uh, as, a, as a TV program it becomes very difficult to watch though because mm -hmm. it's uh, not as easy to grasp and, and, and take in and which makes it not as as uh, a good a TV program uh, actually because it is too much mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh, but the idea is great so it's 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 two things that collide. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. It's just hard to solve it. So, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, we're curious to see what happens during the next couple of years, if it stays the same. Or, but, uh, but, but it's still, we still enjoy it. I mean, we watch it every year. So it's, uh, Would you want to do it again, to compete at Melody Festival and then go to represent Sweden once, once more? It's nothing we seek for, but, uh, you know, should never say never. Okay. Oh. Well, you know, the Bretna Olsen came in and did a, did a sort of old guys rule type of thing. And, uh, and uh, like we said, we have no plans and we do not anticipate at all uh, coming. But in 10 years, maybe we sit there and say, maybe we sing this great old song about this, you know, something, something. And, and maybe, you never know. Do you also write music yourself? Yes, yes. yes. We all compose music, so. And we all enjoy doing it, but I think all of us feel that we, sh we, we, uh, we want more time. It takes mm -hmm. time to do it, so... Okay. Anybody you would like to sing with? Is there anybody you like to really, I would like to sing with or write a song for? Oh, I can, Ooh, that's I can, I can think of many. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can write a song for Celine Dion. Wow. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Anyone who would sell a million uh, copies yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah. no yeah. problem. Good answer. The teacher's answer is. Yeah. 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 thank you very much for chatting with us. What are your future plans now? Right now, we will do a sound check. Yes. <laughs> no, but, I, um, no we, we do our work. I'm from yeah. myself, Richard. I, you know, I'm, I'm planning a, a big and great year with the, with the things I work with and, uh, and hopefully a great year for my family. Excellent. Yeah. And for you, you continue yeah. as, as uh, headmaster and teacher? Yes, yes mm -hmm. that's right. And uh, just uh, uh, ch uh, we have children now that are, are going to be teenagers, so that's uh, my biggest challenge this year. Okay, okay. okay. congratulations. <laughs> 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 to keep the peace in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. okay. And for you? And I'm going to sue the record companies. Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> this year. <laughs> no, but. Uh, so life is good. Yeah, life is good. No, but uh, yeah, we're. we're uh, I, th I think this year, actually, since it's 30 years ago, most likely we we will do some some little bit extra things that we haven't done maybe in a while. So. Perhaps returning to the scene of crime, to the Grand Theater of Luxembourg, and see how it looks now these days. Yeah, that's yeah, a good that's idea. A good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. We just thought of that. Yeah, that would I was there a few years ago, actually, yeah. with my family. To, to them just to show where it was. Yes. Did you go inside? Could you go inside? No, no, but we were outside. Yeah. We actually were on the stage, and in what two or three years ago, we were there, okay. and we said, "This is where Anna Marie David won, and the race as well." Wow. We could go on the stage. And it's give it's you such a people. small. I mean, it's not very big. Yeah. yeah. I mean, compared yeah, to now, when yeah. they have all these big yeah. arenas, it's a concert hall. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. A, yeah, it's not. A, it's not an arena. Right? <laughs> What was amazing, fans actually went on the stage and kissed the ground. Okay. <laughs> it's like the holy ground for, for your vision fans. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, Pierre, Richard, Louis, thank you very much for chatting to us and thank we wish you. you all the best of luck for your future endeavors. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.